<laughs> oh, here I am, crazy in the morning, and you can hear drilling. Yes, that's my neighbor. He's been drilling since, um, it's 8.45 now. He's been out there drilling for a good half hour. Uh, he's putting up flag posts, flag stands, so he can hang flags off his balcony. Um, hoping this isn't going to be like blowing over into my area all the time. It's going to piss me off. <laughs> Well, anyway, you know who this is. This is Cassidy. Um, it's early morning Saturday. Look at my hair. I can't get a different wig. I hate how this one lays in the back. Either I gotta get it or I'm gonna have to get it trimmed, but starting off the uh, Labor Day weekend the right way. Um, getting up at like five o'clock in the morning and just sort of lying around on my easy chair in my snuggie, snuggly, my onesie, um, just sort of trying to doze back off to sleep and not having much success. Uh, I was also up until about midnight last night. Um, I completely binged on uh, the last six episodes, of, which is like three quarters of the season of the Kettering Incident uh, because I just could not stop. It got weirder and weirder and stranger and I just had to watch it, so. <clears throat> uh, Jesus. So for those of you who also read the reblogs I do of our TV recaps from The Snarking Dead and you've seen uh, Rachel's recap uh, of the first episode of the Kettering Incident where I also added in my notes and included some important UFO information because frankly I used to be a real big UFO geek uh, back when I was like a tweener and teener uh, seriously you know you could you could just mention like this the smallest part of something and I knew it you know, I, I knew all this different stuff, you know. So, go figure. Yeah, you know, I had to have something to keep me interested, have something to keep my mind going. I mean, I realize nowadays, 99.9% uh, .9 of all those sightings was all BS. It was either just made up crap or people misidentified stuff. Or just out and out fakes in some instances. But, you know, there's that small percentage of things that they cannot... Uh, they can't figure out. And that's always going to be the case, you know. But there's one of the things that happened, if you read uh, my notes at the end of recap number one for episode one of the Kettering Incident, you'll see uh, where I specify uh, one of the incidences that happened in real life that the, they use as the basis for the Kettering Incident that happened in Australia. Uh, back in the 1970s and that is actually considered like one of the great we don't know what happened incidences that still exist down to the point where they've actually had aviation ministers in Australia who just came out and said hey we think the guy was kidnapped by a flying saucer because we just never found anything from this guy you know nothing happened he just vanished and we never found a thing uh, so it's kind of strange, but you know, go out and read that if you get a chance. If you have Amazon Prime, um, we uh, Rachel had specified that Kettering Incident was coming to Amazon Prime on the 30th of September. It came the first of September. I, I, I've already watched it all. I can't help it. Uh, it was really that good, and it had that real. <laughs> it had that real strange vibe uh, that I love from shows, but it's a total slow burn. Uh, I mean, you know, you wonder what the hell is going on the whole time. And a lot of people sit there and go, oh, God, this is boring. But you have to stick with it. And you get to the end of it, and it just leaves you with more questions because they completely set it up for a season two of you just going, what the hell did I just watch? And... <clears throat> I will say, when it comes to strange stuff, what, Christ, <laughs> when it comes to strange stuff, I mean, you know, I have had a lot of what the fuck moments watching American Horror Story, basically because it seems like the writers got bored and said, hey, you know what would really be good at this point? We'll just throw some totally 
uh, completely off the wall shit in here and hope it sticks. And nine times out of ten, it doesn't. Whereas uh, with the Kettering incident, it really, you're just sitting there watching it and it just kept upping the bizarreness. It just kept upping the, the level of, oh Christ, not knowing what the hell's going on. So if you have Amazon Prime, I say, watch it, watch it. Just, just kick back, have a drink, uh, have a, several drinks, actually. Have several drinks and just let it sink in. And don't expect this rip-roaring, fast-paced, uh, everything's going to be resolved uh, type of thing. It's actually all very slow moving, very deliberate of how they just keep building stuff. And I have found that that actually tends to be kind of the way things are done outside the U.S. Because uh, I've watched a lot of British drama. I've watched movies and whatnot from, um, from Europe I've seen some from Australia as well. And everything seems to be a deliberate build. You know, it just takes its time getting to the payoff. Whereas in America, you know, if we don't have somebody shooting another person within 10 minutes, we're bored. Uh, true story, and I think I've related this on my blog before, is that uh, when I wrote the prequel novel to The Foundation Chronicles, which of course I've never shown, uh, but I have it. Uh, well, I wrote the prequel novel to that, and I gave it to a beta reader. Now, the novel itself is 53,000 words long. And she got back to me like a day later and said, I can't read it. She said, there's just nothing happening. And I was like, well, what are you talking about? She goes, there's just nothing happening. There's nothing happening. Now, she had beta read uh, Her Demonic Majesty, and she loved the fact that in the second chapter I was just like busting ass action right then and there and it just moved forward and I said well in reality you know that's the way it was the the uh, her demonic majesty took place over like a weekend it really did they had to it had to be fast paced but um, no she actually wanted me to start with what was uh, I guess you could say part three. I'd have to go back and take a look. But she wanted me to cut out like almost the first twenty thousand words. It was like eighteen it was like eighteen or nineteen thousand words. The first two parts. She wanted me to cut that out completely because it was all character building. It was all introducing characters and showing how stuff was leading up to the point where um, the scouring took place in the School of Salem, and she didn't like that. She was just like, no, nah, I don't need to know any of this stuff. I just want to get to the action. <laughs> I was like, holy Christ, you know, come on. But yeah, she thought character building was, um, I was wasting her time. And she said she actually only got into like the first three pages and then had to put it down because nothing was happening. <laughs> okay, well, moral of that story is, I guess when you start a novel, like when I, I would not have let her read, beta read the um, A for Advanced, uh, unless of course the first thing that happens is Annie turns around and just blows her mother up <laughs> on page two, you know? And he's just sitting there like, I'm going to school. I'm going to go off to school. I'm going to go see Carrie. Annie! Oh, shut up, Mom! <laughs> and you know, Mom explodes on the porch of her lake house. That's how you do it. I guess that's what you wanted to see, so. Uh, one of the other things I'm considering, and I've been thinking about this actually for a couple of weeks, is taking one of my old stories that I know is probably never going to get published. And I'm considering taking one of my old stories um, from what I used to call my transporting universe, which is a completely science fiction universe, but two of the characters in there, um, two of the main characters in that story really were the people I drew a lot of, I guess you could say the influence for Carrie and Annie. 
um, they really were kind of the influence and it had that same kind of feel for what ended up happening uh, for the Foundation Chronicles. I sort of drew from those two characters and I actually wrote uh, two now was it two novels? Yeah, two novels and a novella in this universe. And uh, the one I was thinking about publishing is uh, actually putting up on the website is uh, the no novella that I wrote after I wrote Her Demonic Majesty. Uh, it was actually the one I decided I needed to sit down and just begin cranking out something else because I'd finished up Her Demonic Majesty at the end of uh, NaNoWriMo 2011 and I did some editing through December and then when I got to the end of December I said, you know, I need to keep going. I need to keep doing things. And so I wrote a story called Echoes, which is really a continuation of another story that I wrote that I had actually wrote and then rewrote and it turned into a novel uh, within that same universe. And I've actually spoken about it because there were a couple of dream sequences in this novella that really do tie back uh, to Annie and Carrie's, re in a way, Annie and Carrie's relationship. You, you see something going on there that is uh, really, really strange. Not that any and Carrie's relationship is strange, but it was, this was really the first novel, uh, novel, it was really the first story where I began to start exploring my own feelings. And uh, I can tell you, when I wrote this, this novella, there was a lot of crying. There was. Uh, I, there were a number of areas, especially the very, very end. I can remember even now, when I wrote the end of the story, I was crying like the whole time, you know, just like, oh, God. <laughs> I really was. It, it was just so emotionally racking. And I've had that story put away for, you know, since I think I re-edited it late in 2012 and I haven't done anything with it since. Probably because I know I'm probably never going to publish it. So I'm seriously considering actually putting it out in kind of like a chapter by chapter basis and giving some synopsis and showing people kind of like where I was coming from when I was writing this stuff. But you definitely, when you see the two main characters at work, how they work and how they act, you'll see that basically I transplanted a lot of the stuff uh, from those two characters into Annie and Carrie, which is not a bad thing. I mean, you know, a lot of people can say, well, all your characters are the same. You know what, they said that about Robert Heinlein for 50 years. Well, you know, all the main characters are just like you. Uh-huh, yeah, and, you know, he made a living off of that. So, you know, it's not, it, it's not that bad of a thing. So, But that's one of the things I'm considering doing. Uh, and it would actually give me a chance to, like, I don't know, maybe one of these days I'll take that stuff and say, here's all my early crap, uh, 99 cents, you know, it's yours. I don't care, or just read it for free, I don't give a shit. But I think it would be kind of interesting to look back on that and see, you know, this is how, these were the stories that I first developed, and this is how it got me to where I'm at now. And how I took what essentially was like a 20,000, I think it was 20,000 words. I don't actually remember the word count, but I think it's, it's either a novelette or a novella, but it's very short, it's about 20,000 words long. Um, but you actually do see a lot of the characters there and you get a lot of the feeling of the, the love that they had for each other, but it's, it, there's a twist in here, you know, and a lot of it involves time travel and stuff like that. Me? Do, do weird science fiction time travel stuff? Oh, that's impossible. I would never do that. So anyway, uh, that's just one of the things I'm throwing out. I, I will be putting out an excerpt later this afternoon. <sighs> Today is going to be one of those busy days. Um, I have to leave to go get my nails done. 
I've had this for, you know, almost a month now. Um, I'm going to go get my nails done again. And then um, I'm going to come back here between noon and two or one. I haven't decided which. Probably put out my excerpt and then I'm going to go do, we're having a big riverfront festival today. Uh, it's like the 100th anniversary of them doing this festival. And I'm going to be helping out with voter registration during the festival. I'm going to be down with our people at uh, you know Democratic uh, Pennsylvania Democratic Committee, and I will be helping with voter registration during this during this uh, festival. And maybe when I'm done there, I'll grab a burger and a beer before coming home, which is highly possible because they're going to have a huge beer garden there. So I'm probably yeah, I'm gonna have a couple before I come back. Um, yeah, but uh, that—that's my day for today. So I really, after I'm done with that, I'm probably just gonna come back here and just like go. Uh, I'm gonna kind of veg out a little bit because it's gonna be a busy day. You know, it, it's first day of Labor Day weekend. Most people are just vegetating in front of the TV or out shopping uh, for groceries so they can get drunk and grill shit tomorrow. <laughs> And um, last night I spent, you know, six hours watching television and uh, now I'm going to go get my nails done and then stand around outside and uh, ask people, do you have, is your voter registration information up to date? Would you like to sign up? No? You're voting for Trump? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Just remember, vote for Hillary and there will be a taco truck on every street corner. We promise. Because the Trump people said so. You know, elect Hillary, there's going to be a taco truck on every street corner. And why did that guy think that that was such a bad idea? <laughs> really? Why did he think that was a bad idea? I would love a taco truck on most of the street corners around here. Because Harrisburg needs it. We don't have them. It makes finding, it makes getting lunch around here really difficult. And a taco truck on every corner would be a godsend, I swear. <laughs> and just think, all those small businesses coming together, um, you know, making money. You could camp like five or six of them out around the Capitol and they'd be rocking. <laughs> Lunchtime, those, those trucks would just be rocking. They would, seriously, you know. But no, is this remember? So that's why I'm, that's going to be my thing. It's like, is your voter registration information up to date? Because remember, if it isn't, if it is, there will be a taco truck on every street corner. Promise. And then, you know, maybe some people will be serving some other stuff. You know, we'll see. But yeah, taco truck on every corner. Just remember, that's what that's my goal for this selection is taco trucks every street corner and this is really going to be great because since the elections always fall on a tuesday uh we can claim you know taco tuesday election 2016. <laughs> you know that's just the way it plays what can i tell you so tacos every street corner do it so i'm gonna get going here uh i'm gonna boost this up Gotta do my thing, I gotta get ready. As you can see, I'm still in my pajamas. Oh. <laughs> my sexy, sexy pajamas. Actually, these are really comfortable. I love these pajamas, but do you notice I'm just sort of rambling along, just saying whatever comes to my mind? Uh, that's because I'm in a really good mood. Let's hope it stays this way. What would really make it nice is if after we do rotor registration, I get to hang out with a nice girl or woman, I should say. Uh, I'm hanging out with girls. That's kind of skeezy. <laughs> skeevy. <laughs> Don't want to be hanging out with any girls. Uh, you know, hang out with a nice woman, have a burger, have a beer, and just chat about stuff. And, uh, oh, and um, coming up in about six weeks, I'm going to be doing something special here in Pennsylvania. I've already made up my mind I'm going to do it, and uh, I'll probably write about it at some point between now and the six weeks, but it's going to be fun. <laughs> it's going to be fun. I'm a girl of my word. 
and then there's there's toothless right there hi toothless so i'm gonna get going okay i'll catch catch you later take care bye